So the calming of the storm at sea, Peter walking on water. It's the perfect reading for our time. And it provokes an important question. Where was Peter safer? Was he safer out on the water? Or was he safer in the boat? Was he safer out on the water? Jesus gives us the counterintuitive answer that Peter was way safer out on the water trusting in the Lord than he was in the boat trusting in the wood and the glue and the nails. He was way safer clasping Christ's hand than trusting in the work of his hands. Peter was safer, and the good news today is that so are you. We might know this in our heads. We might believe this in faith. But the Lord really wants to teach our hearts through concrete experience, through concrete choices. He wants us to know his peace, the only peace that can weather any storm. This reading is perfect for our time because we're living through a storm. Figuratively speaking, there there are many storms swirling in our world right now. We've got war, political storms, social storms, health storms. All kinds of storms, and something historic is happening, if you haven't noticed, is the things we thought we could trust in are failing us fast in the midst of these storms. And we can wonder in the, in the midst of all of it, like, where is God? It's like Elijah in the first reading looking for God, looking for the Lord. It says, a strong and heavy wind was rending the mountains and crushing rocks before the Lord but the Lord was not in the wind. We fall into this fearful fascination with storms. The media doesn't help. It's almost like it's designed to get us to look into the storm, look into the eye of the storm, and take our eyes off of Christ. We become storm watchers, tracking every movement, desperately seeking, desperately planning, seeking to control, seeking security, and we forget about God. So if there's a message for our time, it's the message that St. Peter teaches us tonight. Keep your eyes on the storm, and you're going to sink. But keep your eyes on the Lord, and you're going to be fine. A storm is chaotic. It's, It's unexpected. It's unpredictable. You think you have a plan until the storm strikes, right? It reminds me of that famous line from the boxer Mike Tyson. It's like, yeah, every fighter has a plan until he gets punched in the face. That's what storms are like. They just, they hit you. They come at you. They, they unsettle you. They unmoor you. A storm is, is a bad timing. Anxiety attack, anger, loss of faith. All of a sudden, our life changes. We're th- thrust into this personal crisis. And it's a feeling of, of panic and helplessness. And the message for us today comes from St. Peter is keep your eyes on the Lord and you'll be fine. Because storms are loud and they're they're powerful, they're intimidating, but they pass. Every storm passes. But the Lord Jesus is all-powerful. He is meek and he remains. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever, and he's not going anywhere. And he's in control, especially when we're not. Heaven and earth will pass away, my words will never pass away. He comes to us like he comes to Elijah, not in the dramatic storm, the rocks crushing, the fire, the wind, but in that tiny whisper. And he says, be not afraid. It is I. Take courage. Let go of your false security and know that you're safe with me. What was true of St. Peter is true for you and me. But we're invited today to ask ourselves a question. Where do you put your trust? Like, really, where do you put your trust when you're up against... And you don't really know the answer to that until you're under the gun. We don't ultimately often see what we're trusting in until we're on trial, until we're in the crisis. But we can try to answer it now and ask the Lord to really reveal it to us. Lord, what do I trust in that's not you? Where do I put... Is it in my bank account? The economy, is it in my relationships, my friends, 
my connections, my job, my position? What do I trust in? The Congress? Courts? The healthcare system? Now, none of these things are bad. But insofar as we put our ultimate trust in these things, when they fail, not if, when they fail, we'll sink with them. We're called to purify and deepen our trust in the Lord. Think of St. Peter. You know, he's out in the storm, and as long as he's looking at the Lord, he's fine. As long as he looks at anything else, he sinks. Our Lord wants to refine and purify our trust in him. So how does he do that? How, how practically, how do we keep our eyes on him? Well, there's the, the ob- some things are obvious. So living the moral law, living the teachings of the church, especially the difficult ones, having a spiritual life, having a regular prayer life, where you, where you enter into that intimate and unceasing union with God that he so desires with you, receiving the sacraments, especially the sacrament of confession, getting up right away and repenting immediately when we commit a sin. But there's something else that gets gets more to the heart of it. What does it mean to trust in the Lord? It means two things. It means giving him your mind's attention, and it it means giving him your heart's affection. Giving him your mind's attention. It means going through the whole day asking this question, what does God want of me right now? That's what it means. And most of the time, it just means loving the person he's placed right in front of you. Doing the duties of your state in life to the best of your ability. That's where God is found in those ordinary things. That's where holiness is found. But secondly, is giving him your heart's affection. How do we do that? It's a little deeper. This only comes from having a good prayer life. You know, we have great things in our lives. We have home, we've got a job, family great blessings. Everything that's good in your life and my life is simply a reflection of God's goodness. And in heaven, that's what we're going to have directly and perfectly. Remember that, and God will always have your heart's affection, because you will always feel his love, knowing that these good things are him loving you directly. You won't become desperately attached to the good things the Lord gives, but you'll become attached to the good Lord. And that's really what he wants. He wants your heart. He wants that intimate, unceasing union with you. So much we get obsessed with his stuff, his favors, his good stuff. That's not actually going to fulfill us. He wants that relationship with us. And he has this mysterious way of putting our trust to the test of breaking our attachments to some of these lesser things. There's an interesting detail in the gospel. It says, Jesus came to them during the fourth watch of the night. Now, just in case you don't know what that means, the Romans divided the night into four watches. So the first watch is six to nine. Second watch, nine to midnight. Third watch, midnight to three. It's also called the cock crow. It's like when Peter denied Jesus. Then the fourth watch is 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. When did Jesus send them out in the boat? Like at the beginning of the evening. That means they were fighting the storm and crying out for his help all night until he showed up. And you might feel that way too. I know I do. At times we cry out and we cry out. We're in the crisis. We're in the storm. Why doesn't he show up? It's hard to know why God does anything, but the saints give us a couple reasons why God delays. First reason, St. Augustine says that God delays answering our prayers because he needs our desires to grow. When you really want something and you have to wait, your desire grows until your desire is big enough to receive the gift. So that's one reason God delays. The second reason God might delay is because he wants you and I to come to the point where we're aware that he and only he can save us from what afflicts us. Not government, not my independence, not my self-reliance, not my resources. You are safer trusting in the Lord than you are clinging to the boat. The boat's going down. 
Trust in the Lord, and you'll never hope in vain. Surrender to him, he'll do all things for you. Don't fear the eye of the storm, but keep your eyes on Christ in all things, and you will have peace. You'll have peace no matter what's going on around you, even as rocks are being crushed and mountains are being moved. Jesus does not watch the storm. The storm watches him. He watches you. He watches over you. He comes to you in the silence. It's, 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 it's the voice you can only hear in the silence of prayer. He comes to you in that tiny whisper, and he says, Take courage. It is I. Do not be afraid. 